here on this channel, we picked the Dallas Mavericks in six games. Two main reasons. Number one, I felt that Dallas had bodies to throw at Anthony Edwards to where he was constantly working for everything. Whether it was Kyrie, P.J. Washington, Derek Jones Jr., Josh Green coming in, Tim Hardaway Jr., Exum Hardy. The Mavericks have a lot of guys that they can throw at Anthony Edwards. A lot of bodies, a lot of energy, a lot of minutes, all determined to slow Anthony Edwards down. And Anthony Edwards looked absolutely gassed by the end of tonight's game, and tonight was only game one. There are no extra days off in the conference finals. Every game is going every other night. Second reason why we thought Dallas was going to win in six. If Anthony Edwards doesn't have it rolling, you are dependent on Carl Anthony Towns. And we have all seen a cat run Minnesota team for many years before Anthony Edwards got to town. And it's not that impressive. It is not enough to win you huge games. Obviously, tonight was a phenomenal game. I thought both sides played really well. The first half was all Minnesota, if you ask me. Minnesota had more energy. Minnesota was giving more effort. Minnesota was getting easier looks on offense than the Dallas Mavericks were. Jaden McDaniel starts out super hot. I think he hit his first three threes at least. Gobert ends up with 12 points. Kyle Anderson off the bench. I think he missed one shot, gets 11 points. Every time Dallas thought they slowed them down in the first half, it was Kyle Anderson who knocks down a little floater in the middle, a little something that just keeps the Minnesota momentum rolling. But Dallas kept this thing close going into halftime, shooting the ball horribly. Minnesota outscored Dallas by 36 points from beyond the three-point line. But Dallas dominated the paint. That was not something we thought was going to happen with the size advantage that the Minnesota Timberwolves have over the Dallas Mavericks. Rudy, Nas Reed, Carl Anthony Towns, with those three bigs, Dallas cannot match up with that size. So we did not think this would be a paint game for Dallas, but Minnesota decided to help on Luka all the time, everything they got, try to slow Luka down, try to slow Kyrie down from getting buckets in the paint, and that left all sorts of dump downs for Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford. Gafford 10 points, Lively 9 points, both of those guys played really well. Energy, effort, all the things that Dallas needs out of those two bigs, they were able to get with those two guys tonight. Kyrie finally gets off to a fast start. He's been playing the slow game in the first half throughout these playoffs, but tonight he says, nope, it's on me. I'm going to turn it on. Kyrie really helps keep Dallas in it the first half while nobody was hitting shots. And then in the fourth quarter, Luka Doncic takes over. I think he had 16 points in the fourth quarter. He has the game's winning stop, I feel like. Minnesota ran a play that opened up a Rudy Gobert lob, and it was Luka that jumps up and snatches that ball out of the air, able to tip it away, get it to a teammate, go out and run, and Dallas got that possession. Huge stop by Luka, huge fourth quarter by Luka. Luka brought his ass. All right, that's what I'd say. Luka brought his ass to this game. And the scary part is he still didn't play his best game. He played very well. He played better than he did most of these playoffs, and so did Kyrie Irving from a scoring perspective. But I think Luka still has a notch up to go, and this entire Dallas roster definitely has a notch up to go. All of these guys for Dallas are expecting to make more shots than they did tonight. I think you can expect more of the same from this series. I think you can expect all of these games to be closely contested. The series is going to feel like it goes back and forth wildly. I fully expect Minnesota to fight back and tie this thing up at 1-1. But it's going to be another close game where it can go either way. An adjustment I could see Minnesota making is not committing to Luka quite so hard off of the screen and roll and really protecting against the lob threats and the dish out. They tried making Luka pass. Now they might try making Luka score, which that would be fine for Luka. I think the Mavs would take that as well. But something's got to change a little bit for Minnesota. You expect Dallas to hit more threes next game, and you expect the next game to look a lot like this one outside of that. Got to be demoralizing for Minnesota. Plus 36 from the three-point line compared to Dallas. 
Jaden McDaniels with a huge night, 24 points, 6 of 9 from 3. It is tough to waste a huge night from Jaden McDaniels like that. Rudy Gobert had 12. Carl Anthony Towns, 6 of 20, only 16 points. Again, playing into the hands of if you have to depend on Carl Anthony Towns, you are not going to win very many games. He had a great stretch in the fourth quarter. Minnesota pulled ahead for a few moments. That was all Carl Anthony Towns. Huge three, deep three that went down for him. And that I thought the momentum kind of shifted there to Minnesota, but Dallas was able to fight back. Anthony Edwards couldn't get anything going. They depended upon Cat, and Cat could not finish the job. In the end, the Dallas Mavericks looked a lot better at the entire second half. It The The script totally flipped from first half to second half. First half, it was all Minnesota getting easy looks. It was Minnesota getting to every loose ball. Minnesota showing the effort and the energy. And in the second half, it was all Dallas. Dallas seemed to get every loose ball. Dallas seemed to get easier shots. Dallas seemed to have things rolling better in that second half. They knocked down a few threes and the rest is history. This series is going to be so much fun. I'm so excited for it. Cannot wait for Friday night. This channel had Dallas and six. We will stick with that prediction. I think Minnesota probably comes out and wins game two, but we'll see. It's going to be another tight one.